German minister vows to back Ukraine no matter what voters think. And Elena Baerbock says supporting Kiev matters more than expected winter unrest. Quote, if I give the promise to people in Ukraine, quote, we stand with you as long as you need us, then I want to deliver. Even if it gets really tough for politicians. Yeah, really tough for politicians. The politicians who definitely are not going to have any sort of gas shortages. The politicians who are not going to have to take showers with a rag. The politicians who are not going to have to resort to cold water. The politicians who aren't going to have to live through winter, die through winter because they don't have heating or electricity. The politicians, it's going to be tough because they're going to have to face the public scrutiny of the people of Germany that are going to be facing all of those absolutely in human circumstances so they can serve the ulterior motive of virtue signaling to ukraine because they believe in ukraine and they made a promise to ukraine no bitch you made a fucking promise to the people of germany when you took office you didn't make a promise you're not an elected official in kiev you're not an elected official in ukraine what are you talking about how does this ultimately play out in europe what do you see as vladimir putin's ultimate end game? Well, uh, we've seen Nord Stream 1 uh, capacity and throughput go from 40% uh, to 20%. And honestly, I would be surprised if there's any gas flowing from Russia to Germany by the time we get to winter, precisely because the Europeans, uh, both through their sanctions and also through their efforts to find diversified sources and reduce their use, have showed the Russians that they are trying to move as quickly as humanly possible to get away from Russian energy. And once that happens, the Russians no longer have any leverage. So, I mean, the question you have to ask yourself is, given that Putin is fully aware of that, is he prepared to sit, just sit around and wait for the Europeans uh, to no longer need Russian energy and no longer take it? I think the answer to that pretty clearly from Russian behavior so far in the last few months is no, and that's going to make it a very hard winter for the Europeans. But that's unlikely to change. I mean, th the worse he gets, the more Europe is going to dig in and say, forget about Russia longer term. We're going to go to U.S. liquefied natural gas. We're going to go to renewables, et cetera. All at the same time, Putin is adding on to a pipeline network to China, almost building on his umbilical cord, if you will, uh, with the East, Ian. So it's almost odd. Is is Putin kind of trying to spite the hand to cut off his face here or just inflict uh, maximum pain because he can? Look, I, again, I, I think that the decision by the Europeans has been made on the back of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, not on the back of them reducing gas later on. Uh, but there's no question uh, that the Europeans are holding together very strongly here through seven rounds of sanctions, far tougher than anyone would have expected and far more united than anyone would have expected before the Russians invaded. That's the real story here. And so if you're Russia and you understand that that is going to be the outcome no matter what, then what Putin is trying to do is hope that by making the Europeans really hurt European citizens this winter, that there'll be much more of a peace movement. There'll be much more domestic pressure inside countries like Italy and Germany that are gonna hurt a lot. Uh, I mean, you're talking about serious GDP contraction when they're no longer facing any potential of Russian gas in the winter. Well, how much pressure is that gonna put on these governments? That's frankly the only play Unless, unless, Putin, unless Putin believes that he's actually going to put an end to the Ukrainian war and that the sanctions are going to come off, and there's nothing we've seen from Russia in the last five months that would lead anyone yeah. to believe that. So this is really, how much can I squeeze the Europeans to see if I can break some of them? I, just, I was just in Germany a week and a half ago talking about this, Ian. I don't know how much the people of Europe are ultimately going to be willing to suffer and sacrifice their own economies and their livelihoods for what's happening in Ukraine. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that the common sentiment of the people we talked to was like, listen, we need to keep moving on here. We, we, we just came out of COVID for a couple of years. We can't deal with this. I also wonder if a bunch of you know technocrats in Brussels making these decisions are ultimately going to speak for the people. I mean, you've got people in France that are saying, why should we suffer for Germany? Right? We've got our own nuclear. They've invaded us twice in 100 years. 
I, I just, I don't know how much the people will stick together versus the politicians. Look, it's a fair point. I mean, if this was the United States, uh, would, would American citizens be willing to take higher prices at the pump for Ukraine? The answer is pretty, pretty clearly no, a lot of them wouldn't. So I, I, I get your point, of course, but let's also be clear that 27 EU nations unanimously voted to give candidate member status to Ukraine and Moldova. In other words, the Europeans, not the EU as a whole, but individual European governments all embraced the notion that Ukraine is a part of Europe and that this war is a European war. And millions of Ukrainians are living in European homes. They're living in, U in European communities. So this does have a lot greater direct impact on Europeans than it does for the United States. We should recognize that too. I have no doubt there will be demonstrations, political demonstrations and pressure. Some will be pro-Russian yeah. and some will be just directly leave this alone we want you to take care of us first. There'll be a Germany first and a, and, a, and a France first and Italy first demonstrations. I have no doubt about that. But, but I don't think they will be strong enough to shake the level of consolidated policy orientation okay. that we've seen, especially because next year, the, the Russians will not be able to hurt the Europeans as much or ever again. This is a short-lived phenomenon. Let's. Uh, I certainly hope you're right as they, they come more to U.S. LNG. Very quickly, Nancy Pelosi is in Asia, unclear whether she will indeed go to Taiwan. China effectively saying they may you know, force a jet down or shoot down U.S. military jets. If Pelosi does not go to Taiwan, does the U.S. look weak? And if she does go to Taiwan, does China look weak? I mean, how this is a crazy situation playing out overseas. The timing is truly unfortunate. Uh, nobody wanted this to Terrible. leak to the public. Uh, by The Biden White House was trying to deliver this message privately to Pelosi when they found out about the trip a couple of weeks ago, and it leaked uh, to the media, and now it's a much more challenging situation. Look, um, the Americans have told the Chinese to back down in recent months. You'll remember when the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, traveled to Rome and seven hours delivered the riot act to the Chinese, saying, don't you dare provide military support or break U.S. sanctions or else, and the Chinese backed down. So it's clear the Americans tell the Chinese what to do. The Chinese tell the Americans what to do a fair amount. This is a case where it feels uncomfortable for an American with the Chinese saying, don't you dare send your Speaker of the House or there will be military response. That's not going to be shooting down planes, but absolutely it's going to be um, the kind of direct confrontation, heightened alerts, military exercises, uh, potentially after a Pelosi trip, they might announce some kind of no-fly zone. I mean, this is uh, this is not a conflict that either of these yeah. governments want. That's why Biden's been trying to convince Pelosi not to go, but he's not been convinced that she's going to listen to her. And at least as of mid last week, uh, Biden personally didn't know if she was going to go or not. So this is a uh, it is ultimately her decision, but she's going to upset her president directly. Something she has yeah. not been. Want, wanting to do uh, if she decides to go ahead with this.